What is that? These are the Carrier JC series units, which use the Emerson, which is Copeland, inverter driven compressors. So when you get these units here, you will always have a system view because that's the only way it can really be set up. So this is the carrier system view controller here. All of these boards here are made by Emerson for the Copeland compressor. So this is the inverter board. You got your power coming in through your filter board, comes out over here to the inverter board, passes through fuses, goes to the rectifier section of the uh, inverter module, the IPM, and then it's going to go out as DC rectified pulses. The white wire for plus passes through the reactor, and then those two come over to the filter capacitor board right there, capacitor board, and then it comes out back to plus or minus here, which feeds the DC bus to the IPM module in front of the uh, hex bed or what do you want to call it, the output drivers. And this is a you know DC brushless motor driven compressor. As far as what I know, I don't think it's a, I don't think it's an AC one. It's a pretty much sure it's just a brushless ECM basically. And it's driven with the outputs right here, U and W. So the, the way this works is that this here just sends a pulse width modulation out here. One's going to the indoor fan, one's to the outdoor fan, and then you got a two to ten, this little yellow black wire it comes up here to this converter board, they call it. It's a converter board powered up, and this is what translates your speed to the inverter board. This has two-way communication, RS-485, right here, going over to right here. And so this board will serve as sending a 2 to 10, which will, this will interpret what speed to run, 0 to 6,000 RPM, in a run. It also tells you if it's idle, like it is now, idle, I can see that very well, or the RPMs. Or, if it faults, it'll read the fault code, like E-14, E-19, something like that. So, that's what you got. So, this will tell you that the cooling failed, because... It calls for cooling, and then after a few minutes, it notices that the suction pressure transducer did not, you know, show that it was pumping. And then it'll say fail to pressurize in your faults. Other than that, you got to go up to the Emerson converter board here, check for faults up there. So, right now I went to idle. This is just an automatic cooling test. I let it do, and it just stopped. Yeah, it's reading amps and voltages here from the field piece. Wish it wouldn't beep like that. I'll go ahead and pull the voltage out. There's only so much of that you can take. I added the three-phase monitor just to check because it's kind of in an area that might have some questionable voltage issues. There were some uh, faults in there when I got here today, but I don't know if that was generated from technicians working on it or not, so I went ahead and wiped those out so it's starting fresh. So this says auto test complete, press enter to continue, and then that's it. Now you can also do logging. So we're in service test mode now, so I'm gonna turn that off. Okay, I'm doing some trending, so that's flashing. I had to widen the tolerance a little bit for the under voltage, just because we seem to be getting about 204 to 205 volts average here on this site. So it, it tripped right in front of us when it dropped down like to 201 or 202, so I just, widen it up to 5%, which will give us like a 10 volt drop from 208 nominal. That will auto reset. So I've been running this for a while off the thermostat. I had to add a jumper because Y1 is not working on that thermostat, causing an alert for improper, you know, thermostat input. So I just run on Y1 and Y2 now. Yeah, 3800 RPM, compressor seems happy. Inverter temp, a thermal couple on there, so it's like 112 now. So that's doing good. And go down to the inputs. Temperature 61 degree supply and 74 return. It was running 55 earlier in test mode, so this is just doing what it's doing. 
394 discharge 154 suction so it's probably going to ramp up a little bit more 2.6 compression ratio and you can see if they're set it puts g y1 y2 are all on Status here. Cool. Let's see if it says mode. It is mechanical cooling, high cool. So it's ramping up now, 47, 4800. So if we go back to the inputs, temperatures, this should start dropping 61.6 there. So it's not quite a 20 degree split. 61.4. So it's dropping. It'll probably get down into the 50s here momentarily. So, a minute later, it's at uh, 59 degrees and dropping. Inverter temp is now 113. That's not too bad, given the temperature of the outside, 106.5. Yeah, return air is starting to drop. It's down to 73.8. Uh, one thing to note on these temperatures right here that we're just looking at is uh, this return air, which is the space temperature coming up to it, is already dropping down to 73.1. That is red below the economizer damper just coming up to the duct connection. So then we have a 20% damper position right now for outside air. So we're mixing 20% of this 106 degrees. So it's probably closer to 80 at the coil. So 80 down to 58 is a 22 degree split. So it's actually doing really well. So it's been running for like another 15, 20 minutes while I've been watching it. It's just pegged out at 5,100 RPM. That's where I limited it. And um, it's got 71.5 return air so it's dropped like four degrees i think it was like 75 ish when we started it uh the last time and it's 57 mixed with 107 degree outside air it's probably about 80 the mixed air so we're dropping about 22 23 degrees so it's working great the great monitor's happy everything's happy should be good to go all right so i plugged the usb stick in here at home and this is what you kind of get um all the things that I told it to record. They're all kind of alphabetical. So first thing I do is I kind of delete it off the top, the model serial number, I didn't need that in here for you guys. And then uh, we're gonna freeze frame the top row. That way when I scroll, we can see it. So I'm gonna start getting rid of things that I don't really need. I'm not looking at any heat. Here is the uh, IGC IFO. That's how it knows if the gas lit or not is because uh, it tells it to the IGC board to activate, giving it a W1 signal, and then you have a couple minutes, it should light, and then you get the delay, and the fan signal should come out of the IGC board, and that's how it knows that the heat fails. So that's what that input is. We don't need that. Okay, for free cool, we don't need any of that for what we're looking at, so I'll delete that stuff out. And I've modified these before where I kind of just move things where I like them. Like right here, it puts W1, W2, Y1, Y2. Of course, you have your, there's your inputs. So... Uh, you would sometimes move them all the way over here to the left and kind of make it a left to right thing sometimes and I've kind of really tried to study these before but we don't need to do that today here's your compressor a1 strike and all that kind of stuff and the alarm out things you get like that whenever your compressor is going to trip that's you're going to be looking for ca1 available of course it is c a1 lockout nope so when you have a fault, like I said, you're going to see the status change. And then eventually after so many strikes, you're going to get the of a, A1 strike, you'll get it, you know, A1 lockout. And then if your unit only has one compressor, then of course the whole unit's going to be down, you know, unit down, you know, for failure. Um, so some other stuff over here I really don't need. Okay, that's our overflow. Can't think of what this stands for right at the moment. Whatever this is enables. Looks like these things I don't need. Delete. Here's your compressor ratio. Kind of cool you got that. We got our... Uh, here's your cooling demand. It's like a weird ratio here. You see it goes minus and it starts going over one to one. I think these kind of can overspeed and do a little more than their rated BTUs. Damper. Command. Damper position, that's from the feedback. You kind of see they're pretty matched there. ERV, fan stat, not using filter stat, not using fire shutdown. Those could be hooked up. Like I said, free cool. Let's go ahead and get rid of all that. Here's your G signal. 
Yep. Uh, fan speed signal. There's a bunch of things I don't need. I'd have to look them up and see what they are. Mechanical cool. It's pretty much on the whole trend I have here. OAQ. Hmm. Not sure what that is. OACFM. I could just get rid of those. And when you set up the training, you kind of just setting up a bunch. Oh, here's a. This is like outside air. Humidity. We're not reading that. We're just reading the dry bulb temp. The sensor is your outdoor fan speed, which is just pegged at 1200. We have that juiced up a little bit. Factory was 1100, but it's really hot where this is, like 115 degrees hot. Supply air temperature, because you can kind of see that was climbing down here. Again, the outside air temperature 106. Return air temperature 72-ish. It was you can see it was dropping as I was running 71. Doing a pretty good job. As I said earlier in the video, the um, this is return air temperature just coming into the bottom of the unit. So when you look at your temp split, you're like 72 to 57. You're thinking that's not all that good. And it was dropping down a little more, but that's not the temperature split. You have your pos damper position, which is 20 freaking percent because they're psycho these days. Ever since COVID, they got things set 20, 25% <laughs> of outside air. So you got 20% damper open position with 106 degree out there air mixing in with the 72 degree return air. So it's not 72, 73 degrees going to that evaporator coil. It's more like 80. So 80 dropping down to about 57 is like a 23 degree split. That's actually what it's doing. There isn't a mixed air temp uh, sensor on these things. kind of wish there was just to see what it was, but there isn't. So, and as you see, here's a program minimum position. That would tell you what it's that is and then this is what the command it is because if you had an indoor air quality co2 input or something that would be uh overriding this value with the co2 input so uh and then we'll show you the uh saturated suction pressure or suction pressure basically is what it is i don't know why i said saturated but they call it ssp uh, this is your suction pressure, basically, here. And then the saturated suction temperature, which are conversion with math. So you can kind of see, you know, your 140 equals like 48 degree there. And then your, it should be DT or whatever for the, uh, I believe that's what it is for the, or they just call it SDP. I forget why it begins with S's on here, but that's what it is. So you can kind of see uh, where it was. Like 407, 408, 410, and then there's the conversion to the temperature for those. There's 413. So if you take like this number, um, and then this pressure over here, right? So you have uh, your compression ratio was over here. So it's been running about three, which is great. Uh, high cool. See all the different things that was commanded to do. So you could put a lot more stuff in the trend. You can also have it trend a lot quicker. I think I had it at 15 seconds, it looks like, right here. Which, you know, and I just trended for a little bit while I was letting the unit run. Uh, and that's kind of what you're looking at. So I just wanted to just show you kind of what you can do with the trending. Now, of course, if you do start getting uh, trips on the compressor, all you're going to really get is you're going to see what all these conditions were when it tripped. It was usually a lot of times it's like sometimes it might trip right in the middle of it running, but sometimes I see like it. It stopped, and then like the compressor didn't like to start correctly the next time, for example. And you'll see that it's trying to run. The pressure stay equalized. You have zero, you know, or compression ratio of one actually, and uh, it will just uh, do that for some time, and then start triggering your A1 strikes, and then your A1 lockout, and then your units down due to fail after that. So that's kind of what we're looking at there. And then for your alarm or for why the compressor didn't run, you're not going to get that here. You're just going to see when it did and what all the conditions were, the time, the date, what the outdoor temperature was, what the return and supply temperature was. It's still pretty useful information, but again, you're going to have to go to this Emerson board right here, which has got two-way communication, RS-485. It's, if this faults out, the inverter board that's driving the compressor, it's going to uh, display uh, error code. It's going to be like E-19 for like compressor current fold back it's like it's trying to uh slow down and keep itself from tripping but it couldn't so you get that fault which seems to be a pretty popular one in the desert and the heat so anyway i just thought i'd do a little bit of show and tell on this unit and with that don't forget to like share subscribe and comment with that we'll catch you guys all later